Okay, in this example, I want to talk about the color correction node and just kind of uh, piggybacking on what we just finished up, how the color correction node, uh, we have to look at it in a different way when approaching using the color correction uh, along with our gray to set our blacks and whites, our high pulse, which basically is setting our blacks again. And then over here, which basically will be if we want to use the color correction node for different ranges. Um, so for instance, uh, what I want to just briefly, you know, talk about is we, we talked about setting the blacks and whites and doing this high pulse, which is basically kind of adjusting the blacks or, you know, adding more to the blacks to match this background. You can do the same thing here in the gray node, obviously, but just coming over here, just adjusting the, uh, the actual lift here. But one of the common things you'll see here again is, uh, coming in here and seeing a color correct node in the final color correction stuff. So you can see, this is what I like to call uh, post setting your blacks and whites. Okay, so if you want to make just one last adjustment here, the color correction node, you have to stop thinking of this thing as shadows, midtones, and highlights. So you kind of look at it and go, okay, shadows, midtones, and highlights, right? So in other words, you know, if I put my viewer here to the color correction node, right? And actually, let's go down the pipe here. And actually, I just, I'll just leave it. So the color correction node has specific ranges and the normalized values between 0 and 1. So here you can see any value from uh, 0 and then all the way to point 0.1 will get color corrected for shadow. So if I start fiddling with the shadow area here and I start playing with the gain, it's or you know any one of these, it's going to basically affect that range. All right. Then the midtones are going to be anywhere from point 0.1 to a fall off from 0.6 to 0.9. In other words, roughly 0.1 to 0.8 is basically, in this case, the default for midtones. So that's going to affect midtones. So if I come over here to midtones, you can see how it's just affecting the midtones here. It's not touching the these areas here, or you know stuff like that. Um, so finally, we have the highlights. The highlights are like 0.9 to 1. So again, you can see here 0.0.5 point, uh, fall off to to 0.1. So anything in that range will be affected with the highlights. So you can see it's affecting that area there. So sometimes you want to color correct this where you only want a specific range that you want to color correct. Maybe you want to play around, but maybe you don't want to touch the blacks and the whites because we did set our blacks and our whites, right? So we set our blacks and our whites, but you're like, I want to deal with that information between the two, okay? And again, that's been established in our previous tutorial by coming in here and color grading with the gamma, right? The gamma is what takes the data between, you know, like 0.1 and 0.9, uh, you know, kind of roughly respectively, or, you know, symbolically, not literally, uh, between those two ranges and actually color correcting that area. So if you take this color correction node, now you get to choose alternative ranges. So I usually like to grab the midtone, but I'll grab all three of these and move them around. So for instance, you can also hit this little test button here, and you can see the different gradients of the influences here. So if I turn this test button off, you can see we've got, you know, the darkest area, uh, you know, a little bit brighter, and then the brightest area. So if I hit the letter Y, you can see the luminance values, right? Dark, gray, white. You can see as I scrub across, this little bar here is sampling the area. So you can see this is around here, this is around here, right? So in other words, if I want to color correct, just say this range here, you can see my bar moving back and forth, see that? I can actually choose that range by taking this and roughly getting it within that range there. I'm redefining my midtones. So don't think of this as midtones. Think of this as just a range that you want to play with. So I'll just kind of go like this. Bring it here. Again, just scrubbing. And I'll pull this here. And so you can see the midtone value. If I scrub back and forth, I've kind of established it. And now if I come over here to the midtones and just play with the gain, you can see I can color correct that area. Now this is commonly called breaking your color correction where you've taken it to such a contrast uh, uh, extreme that you've broken it. But say you just want to, uh, again, just mess with a certain range. Commonly, the way that you can also work in this case is the shadows. So for instance, the shadows, 
you know, you just redefine this area. You don't have to call it shadow. You just call it a range. You know, this is a range. So if I wanted to fiddle with any value between, say, 0.3 and 0.7, right, or a value between 0.9 and 0.5, right, that's going to be the shadow area. So let's say I want to do a value of what I'll, what I'll call whatever, just a range, from 0.2 to 0.5 of a fall off. There has to be a fall off, or the, or the color correction contrast will be too great, and you'll get like a weird look. So I'm going to do the color correction node here, and let me put this back to one. And now you can see in my shadows, and again, I don't consider it quote unquote shadows, I'm just making a range for me to do some color correction. So the gain obviously is a multiplication operation. So what that's basically doing is uh, just taking the, uh, it's, it's just multiplying it down. So you can, like I said, you could easily break this stuff if you're not careful. And the gamma is like kind of anchoring uh, one end and the other and just kind of pulling sort of like a logarithmic operation up and down here, just like a gamma would with the midtones. But you're actually doing the midtones of this area here. So you're locking down absolute blacks, absolute whites, or not absolute whites by whites, but just these two ranges and you're moving the bar up and down on, on the center of that. So a little bit weird, like I said, but this allows you to color correct specific ranges that you might want to fiddle with. Like for instance, this is a great example here. Maybe I want to lift the shadow information to, and you can see it's matching a little bit better uh, with this, you know. Um, there's a, like I said, there's a lot you can do here, and you can define even this highlight area. So if say I want to go from, in this case, let's go back to my ranges, I can redefine my highlights uh, from, what is this, 0.8 to roughly 0.6. So I'll put like a 0.6 and then a 0.8. And now if I go back in and color correct the highlights and play with the gain, you can see I'm color correcting that area there and I don't want to push it too much and if I do push it too much I can start to pull back on these ranges here and get a quieter result. So let's go ahead and take a look at the difference of what we've done there and just for the color correction. So in the midst of everything we've just done you can see that I I'm basically coming in here, and, th and in this case, in the highlights, we're actually affecting the absolute whites. Okay, we're actually changing the what we would consider the white point. So you got to be careful. In this case, when we come to just fiddling with what we consider to be, in, in, in this case, like the midtones or whatever, if we're just color correcting the midtones, uh, then if that's the case, then we're not really affecting, we're not changing the black point and the white point. Um, but in this case, if we fiddle with the shadows, which in this case we did, uh, because we're gaining up the shadows, we're actually lifting up the absolute black, so the darkest area of the scene. So a lot of confusing color correction terms, I know. Uh, so again, what a common use of color correction, again, the hot key for this is C, is to come in here and re define out your midtones. So if you want to go from this range, which is like, we could see here, this is like a 0.3, to a 0.7. I'll come over here, grab all these guys. So I'll put this to a 0.3. And I'll put this to a 0.7. And I'll just kind of get that range like right there. And now I can come over here. I can get tested by just scrubbing. You're like I want to affect just this area here. Alright, so this this is the area that I want to affect or something, right? And that's just a range. Actually, let's try, let's get that a little bit better. So from here, okay, so I'll just move that a little bit over. So I'm getting the highlights, it's the greatest highlights, and then probably I want to stop around right there, okay? So again, this is defining, if you take a look at it now, the midtones. This is the area, of the range we're actually color correcting, and in that case, I can come in here under the midtones here and play with the gamma. Brighten it and darken it. Again, I'm not if when I do this, I'm not affecting the uh, this set uh, highlights and midtones and so forth. I'm sorry, highlights and shadows. And and you can see I can take the gain, bring that down. And you got the offset. Again, this stuff will break very easily. Color correction will break really easy here. 
You could add some contrast though. That's something that is very common. You can do some contrast to the color there. So for instance, someone's face. And then of course, saturation if you wish. So in the midst of all this, we haven't affected the blacks or the whites. This may not be exactly in the terms of what color correction for your final images, but it's this is I'm trying to use this as an example for you to further understand the capabilities and what you can do and the mecha mechanics behind color correction. So you're not just like, you know, what the heck, what are you doing this for? So, um, yeah, that's pretty much it.